most dramatic use for the Hercules was recently demonstrated on the deck of the USS Forrestal during a series of tests exploring the feasibility of C-130 carrier operations. After a short period of C-130 training which simulated carrier operations, two naval pilots, Lieutenant James Flatley and Lieutenant Commander W. Stovall, accomplished the first Hercules on-deck carrier landings in a C-130F a transport version of the KC-130F marine tanker with the external pods removed. Although both men were excellent carrier pilots, neither had ever flown a four-engine aircraft before. However, with the easy handling Hercules, they proceeded to achieve a total of 29 touch and go and 21 unarrested full stop landings and unassisted takeoffs. Touch and go landings were made from the 650 foot angle deck. Actual takeoffs and landings were made from the axial deck, 900 feet long. However, since stopping distances in all tests were under 605 feet, it was apparent that all landings could have been performed on the shorter angle deck if necessary. As the Hercules turned to, tests proceeded at gross weights up to 121,000 pounds, allowing a payload of 22,000 pounds to be landed on the angle deck or 30,000 pounds on the axial deck. Neither the carrier nor the Hercules required any major alterations for the tests. The aircraft received only minor changes, such as installation of a Mark II fully modulated anti-skid system, which permitted a 10% shorter landing roll. A smaller orifice in the nose landing gear helped to reduce impact on landing. Carrier changes involved only removal of deck cables and the painting of a white line the length of the axial deck to provide directional guidance to the pilot. Piloting technique was found to be nearly normal, and because of its excellent acceleration, deceleration, and control, the C-130's flying characteristics were generally compatible to carrier operations. Landings were made within 50 feet of the end of the deck, and all performance was calculated from that point out. On each landing, the signal officer gave the pilot an engine cut signal when the aircraft was about four feet off the deck. The throttles were immediately pulled into reverse position, allowing the propellers to be in reverse by the time the wheels hit the deck, thus considerably shortening the landing roll. Takeoff technique called for full power on with brakes applied. Along the deck, the pilot handled the throttles and the nose wheel steering for directional control. The co-pilot handled the control wheel, keeping wings level during takeoff. As the aircraft reached actual rotation speed, the pilot took over the control wheel, completing the takeoff. The C-130, of course, was not designed for carrier on-deck landings, and its rate of sink was expected to be its weakest point in this type of operation. However, the average shipboard sink speed during all tests was only 5.2 feet per second, a real surprise, since the C-130 can go up to an 11.2 foot per second sink rate. Although naval carrier planes are usually designed for a sink rate of 22 feet per second, the C-130's unique ability to land a payload of 22,000 to 30,000 pounds, made up of anything from fighter aircraft engines and parts to whole helicopters, onto the deck of a carrier any place in the world, can only extend the striking arm and add to the mobility and versatility of our armed forces.